नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Let us now look at the next uh, type of control action, uh, which is known as a proportional control action. Or the controller will be known as a proportional controller. So, for the previous uh, on-off controller. we saw that uh, the control action or the control output was dependent on the size of the <coughs> current error so in this controller so the controller output the controller output is to the current error so there are two points uh, which i have highlighted here for this uh, control action one is the controller output is proportional and that is why the controller is known as a proportional controller and it is proportional to the current error so all we are interested in is what is the current value of the error and proportional to that will be the action taken by the controller so in terms of uh, the mathematical representation uh, what we will be writing as the deviation from the controller at any time the signal generated by the controller will be proportional to the error at that time and that proportionality constant will be called as kc uh, will be represented as kc and is called as the controller gain in order to find out the transfer function for this uh, controller it is very easy so if we take the laplace transform we can write that us over epsilon s this is same as the transfer function of the controller is simply equal to kc so this is an instantaneous controller which takes action as soon as uh, there is some error which is detected it gets multiplied by this con gain which is known as a controller gain and accordingly the output of the controller changes we will now see how implementation of proportional controller is going to help us in terms of disturbance rejection or set point tracking so just a while ago uh, we saw that uh, for a proportional controller the controller output is proportional to the current error and the proportionality constant is the parameter of the controller which is known as controller gain and in the laplace domain uh, we saw that the transfer function for this uh, controller is simply kc so let us look at uh, the effect of uh, what values are permissible for kc uh, depending on the action of the controller so let us say if the controller is direct acting if y is greater than y set then for a direct acting controller u is greater than u steady state no error we have defined as y set minus y so in this case error is less than 0 and u is greater than u set that means the deviation u is greater than 0 so in terms of the laplace uh, derivative uh, the laplace transform what we see is this has to be negative because a decrease in epsilon is going to cause an increase in u so this was equal to kc 
so for a direct acting controller kc has to be negative similarly for the reverse acting controller uh, we can show that the exactly opposite holds so y is when y is greater than y set u is less than u steady state so epsilon in this case is negative and u tilde is also negative so therefore kc which is the gain which will be greater than 0 so for a reverse acting controller the controller gain will be positive for direct acting controller the gain will be negative so let us now look at the regulatory problem or regulatory response of first order process using a simple p controller So in this uh, what we are assuming that the process is represented as a first order process and we had seen that first order process are, processes are very common in chemical industry and uh, in this case uh, what we are going to have is the disturbance transfer function is going to be first order, the process transfer function we will also assume it to be a first order and the controller is P controller. So the controller is this. Additionally, we'll have the measurement dynamics as and the wall dynamics like this. And here, uh, for simplification or m more interpretation of the results, uh, to the results to be more uh, easily visualized, uh, what we will try to assume make some simplifying assumptions. So, we will assume that measurement is instantaneous. So, because of that uh, what we will try to assume is this is very small compared to 1 and we can neglect tau m s in this case. So, the transfer function becomes k m. And as it is the gain between actual value and the measured value for sensor Km will be equal to 1 because we want the same change in the measured value as is the change in the actual variable. So in that case uh, Gm becomes a simple unity. Uh, even for the wall we will assume that wall is instantaneous. So that tau v is very much smaller than 1 and in that case uh, g v roughly becomes equal to k v. So now uh, k v need not be equal to 1 but what we can always do is we can club the effect of the valve into the manipulated variable. What I mean by that is let us say if we have our original system and whatever is the controller output was u and the manipulated variable is f out. So, g v was representing the transfer function between f out and u and g p was the transfer function between h and f out. So, what we are trying to say is what if we combine these two? So, what we have is a transfer function between the controlled variable and the controller output. <coughs> so, this remains the same. So, what we can do is uh, we can this means uh, we are looking at this entire part which is going to look like g v g p and this is the y. So, currently it is like this and 
so which is going to remain the same in terms of mathematics if we say this is 1 and we include the effect of kv as kp kv over tau p s plus 1. So, what I am trying to say is by incorporating the wall gain into the process gain, I can assume that uh, the wall transfer function is also unity. So, these are just algebraic manipulations which we have done and then those are valid as long as I include that gain as a part of the process gain. With the help of this, I can assume that gv is also equal to 1 because that simplifies our analysis uh, for now. But having said that uh, whatever uh, we can even consider these uh, process, uh, these sensor transfer function as well as walls transfer function as first order and still carry out the analysis, it will be little tedious, but then the results which we are going to obtain the effect of proportional controller, those are still valid. So, you can try those as exercise if you want. So, based on this, uh, if we look at the like regulatory transfer function was equal to G D over 1 plus G P G C G V G M, which is equal to how the output in the closed loop change as an effect to the disturbance. So, uh, before going forward, so if no controller was used, then we want to see how the output changes as a response to input that is same as G D which is equal to K D for this case tau D S plus 1. So, if I had not used any controller, then if there was if unit step was introduced in disturbance, then the output would have changed from its current value and the ultimate value of the response would have been k d. So, the response uh, would have followed first order dynamics and we would had the final value would have been k d. So, the output would have changed by an amount of k d, uh, but in reality we do not want the output to change because of changes in the disturbance. So, the ideal value would have been this where y tilde is equal to 0. So, now the job of the controller is to bring this response below. So, that is the job of controller. So, we will see whether the proportional controller is able to do this job or not. So, let us now substitute, uh, let us now try to find out this y s over d s in the presence of a proportional controller. So, we will substitute the transfer functions. G d was k d over tau d s plus 1, denominator is 1 plus g p is k p over tau p s plus 1, then g c is k c and then we have assumed that these are 1. And as I said, even though we do not assume them to be unity, uh, you can still carry out the analysis uh, and then try to derive the same results. So, this will be equal to k d tau p s plus 1 over tau d s plus 1 and uh, other term will be tau p s plus 1 plus k p k c uh, which I can simplify as k d over 1 plus k p k c
tau ps plus 1 over tau ds plus 1 and this will be tau p over 1 plus kpkc plus 1 so the closed loop response of uh, this p controller uh, for uh, this uh, disturbance is having a second order response so you can see that uh, the denominator trans transfer denominator transfer function has a square term or two first order capacities and the numerator also has a first order capacity so this is a of the form ns over ds which has one zero and two poles so this is a system uh, which we had considered in our example of higher order system uh, numerator dynamics as well and this is going to behave like a first order process because the numerator has power of s power as 1 and the denominator has power of 2. So, we will now uh, see how this uh, looks like. So, for that we will have to find out uh, what are the poles and zeros of this system. So, there are two poles of this system. Uh, so, the first pole is minus 1 over tau d and the second pole is minus 1 plus k p k c over tau p and the 0 of the process is minus 1 over tau p. So, for this particular system uh, you can note that all the poles are real and negative and 0 is real and negative. Now, here let me make a comment uh, that earlier we had seen that this Kc can be positive or negative, uh, but let me tell you that Kp Kc will always be positive in these cases. That is because if the controller is direct acting, then manipulated variable gain is also negative. So, you can verify that for so if you take the example of the search tank. then uh, our, it was direct acting. So, K c was negative and uh, if you see what was the process transfer function it was minus 1 over a s. So, this K p is also negative in this case K p is minus 1 over a. So, you can see that uh, this whenever the controller is direct acting the corresponding manipulated variable gain will also be negative and in effect k c k c k c k p will always be greater than 0 which means this number will always be positive and that tells me that all the poles are negative and real and the 0 is also negative. So, as the 0 is uh, negative and real it is not going to give me any inverse response the only case uh, which is of interest is if this 0 is closer to the origin than the poles. Uh, in that case you may have overshoot. So, if we look at the zeros and poles, so you can see that this pole K B K C being positive will always be away from origin compared to this 0. So, this is not of interest the only interesting case is can this pole be farther closer to origin than 0. So, in order to get, 
so we'll get overshoot if zero is closer to origin than pole which is possible that is if 1 over tau p is less than 1 over tau d which means tau p is greater than tau d so the overshoot is there if disturbance is faster than the manipulated variable so the response uh, which we are going to get will have overshoot if that is the case otherwise the response will look more or less like a first order response and before completing the response let us find out the final value which will be limit t tending to infinity y of t which by final value theorem we can write as limit s tending to 0 s y s which is again equal to limit s tending to 0 s into y s is d s times the regulatory transfer function. So using this uh, the final value which we are going to get is limit s tending to 0 g of s which in this case is equal to k d over 1 plus k p k c which you can easily show that this is going to be less than k d. So the response is not exactly equal to 0 but it is definitely less than k d. So if I plot this response and I try to compare uh, what was the case when there was no controller in that case the response was a simple first order reaching the final value of k d. Now in the presence of controller in the presence of this p controller the response is still first order and we can even see that it is faster than this and which will reach a value which is smaller than k d by this factor 1 plus k p k c. So you can see that the proportional controller has started doing what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to bring this response close to the x axis. It has done that but only partially and in order to make this response. So if I want that this limit y tending to infinity y of t should go to 0 that means my k d over 1 plus k p k c should go to 0 this requires that this k c goes to infinity. Only in that case uh, what we will have is that uh, this intercept or this final value will go to 0 as I keep on increasing k c this number will keep on increasing and then the value of this response the final value will keep on reducing and ultimately only when kc tends to infinity this number will be equal to 0. So for a proportional controller to give me a response which uh, does not where the complete disturbance rejection is possible will require the controller gain to be infinity. In terms in mathematically uh, the way we represent this is uh, through the definition of a quantity called as offset. So offset is defined as the desired final value minus the actual final value. So in this case for disturbance rejection the desired final value is 0 
and the actual final value we got was kd over 1 plus kpkc so the offset is equal to minus kd over 1 plus kpkc and this offset is not equal to 0 for any finite values of controller gain offset tends to 0 which is desired only when kc tends to infinity now this is desired and this is practically impossible as you cannot infinitely increase the gain only mathematically it is possible because this will eventually lead to the manipulated variable going to its upper or lower bound so the manipulated variable will get saturated for some high finite value of kc and you will never be able to achieve zero offset in the presence of a only proportional controller now same thing is uh, valid uh, even when uh, we look at uh, the regulatory control uh, or the servo control servo control using p controller again for first order processes we are interested in gs which is gp gc gv over 1 plus gp gc gv gm uh, with the same sort of assumptions which we have made this is equal to ys over y set s it will be kp over tau p s plus 1 gc is kc gv we have assumed it to be 1 in the denominator we will have kp over tau p s plus 1 and then uh, we have G, gc as kc 1 and 1 so the servo what we get is equal to kp kc over tau p s plus 1 plus k p k c which we can simplify as k p k c over 1 plus k p k c over tau p over 1 plus k p k c s plus 1 so what we are seeing is uh, as a response to a change in the set point uh, to the output the transfer function looks is a, a first order process with uh, this as a gain and this as a time constant. So let us now see what happens uh, if there is a step change in the set point. So we have given a step change in the set point so this is y set and what we are seeing is if there was no controller in place then the output would not had changed so this would have been the output when no controller was in place but as we have put in a controller the final value it is going to look like a first order response. with a final value which is equal to kpkc over 1 plus kpkc so i this is for a unit step change so this was the value 1 and we are actually reaching a value which is less than 1 so what we are seeing is uh, the proportional controller it was supposed to move this original response up to here the proportional controller is coming short of its requirement again uh, even in the case of uh, servo problem so it is moving the process towards the set point but not exactly and what you see that it fails to reach the final value of 1 because the step change was unity and what you are getting is the final value of kpkc over 1 plus kpkc and you can again define the offset as earlier the fi desired final value in this case is 1 and the actual final value is this which uh, again is equal to 
1 over 1 plus kpkc. So, you can see that it has the same form and for offset to go to 0, you require kc to go to infinity. So, again in the case of servo problem, uh, what we see that the proportional controller cannot give you the desired final value and uh, for that it will require infinite controller gain which is again a mathematical entity. The only thing which uh, is of interest uh, is that it is moving the process towards the desired direction. So, we will now see that how do we improve this in order to get this offset to be 0 with a finite controller gain what we need is an additional controller action which will be the integral action. So, we will take a break here and we will see how addition of integral action will help us achieve this offset to go to 0 even for finite values of controller gain. Thank you.